And joining us for more on this development is a broadcast journalist, Tete Kofi. He joins me from the UK. Good to have you join us. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure to be with TBC. I can imagine what your reaction is right now and just general reaction in the UK. But let me ask you, we know that in, in the previous polls, um, Rishi Sunak seemed to have been an, ahead and he was tipped to become uh, the next prime minister of the UK. Uh, explain to us how um, Liz Truss got the advantage over Rishi Sunak in this very last poll. Okay, well, two things happened. First of all, in a wider race, um, Richie Sunak was doing much better. Then as the candidates dropped out, they lent their support to Liz Truss. And that's when the opinion polls started showing Truss drawing ahead of Richie Sunak. So in the end, she won 57% um, to the 42% of uh, Richie Sunak. And of course, that's just made her the third female prime minister mm. of the United Kingdom. And let's also um, state that all, for all, all, all other um, female prime ministers have also been conservative leaders as well. Um, um, whether it, it was Margaret Thatcher or whether it was um, uh, Theresa May, they've all been conservatives. But give us a sense of how um, um, Britons are feeling about this news. How, what, is the, what is our support base in the UK? Okay. What, what we have to do is to divide uh, the Tory party from the United Kingdom at large. The United Kingdom at large had had enough of the dramas. Uh, the United Kingdom at large was sick and tired of the culture of party going and sleaze and so on, which was gradually over the years being attached to the government of Prime Minister Boris Johnson. And so, if you actually look at it, Boris Johnson wasn't doing anything he'd never done before. What happened was two significant um, by-election defeats, one of which returned the biggest uh, by-election defeat in the history of democracy in the United Kingdom. When the Tory party lost uh, a 24,000 majority, to the Liberal Democrats. That was followed on the same day by another by-election defeat when one of the what so-called Red Wall uh, constituencies, which they had wrested from Labour, was returned, was returned back to Labour. I think that the parliamentary Tory party took a view of this and did the calculus. They realised that maybe Boris Johnson was now too toxic to take forward as the Tory leader. So when it comes to Richie Sunak now, they had to do the sums. I am pretty certain that if the whole of Britain was conservative, Richie Sunak would be prime minister today. However, they are doing the calculus, they're doing their sums, and they're realizing that perhaps across the country, um, uh, Liz Truss is actually more popular. Richard Sunak is the wealthiest man in Parliament. He's worth over £200 million. He went to one of the most exclusive schools like Boris Johnson, um, and um, I believe he's an Oxford graduate. He was a former merchant banker. There was a sense that people might feel that he was somewhat out of touch with the ordinary people. And the choice of this leadership is completely about um, the Tories clinging on to power in the next election, which we all believe will be 2024. Mm -hmm. So and, that's how it came about. And, and she didn't mention that in her speech. And I want to get to that speech uh, now. Um, mm -hmm. She ran on the slogan, um, Trusted to Deliver. And she did say, she did talk about delivering um, to the voters what she had promised. She talked about delivering on um, cutting taxes and growing the economy. She talked about delivering on energy prices and supply, and as mm -hmm. well as the nation health, um, the, the, the national health service. Mm -hmm. But what do you think that her biggest challenge will be? Well, I'm a, I'm a citizen here. We all live here. Britain is facing the biggest cost of living crisis in my lifetime. This is not a joke. We are expecting fuel bills to rise by between um, by between four times and for, for businesses up to 10 times what they have been. 
we are looking at the very real prospect of British people and member, members of the G6. This is amongst the top six wealthiest nations in the world having to make a choice this winter of whether or not to heat their houses or to eat. And many people are finding this completely uh, unacceptable. So we don't know how Liz Truss is going to square that with her philosophy of cutting taxes. Personally, it seems to me that Liz Truss is going to be a PM for the wealthy because the only people who will benefit from these tax cuts are the relatively wealthy people. And secondly, the signal it'll send around the world that if you invest your money in the United Kingdom, the government won't interfere with you. You will have uh, free reign to do your business and take away your profits. But all of that in the face of the biggest cost of living crisis, I, I just checked the inflation figures. It's hit 10.1%. That's double digit inflation. Um, the, uh, 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 the, the basic rate of, of tax um, of, of interest has gone up to 1.75%. That means that mortgage payers are going to have to start facing uh, bigger bills on top of the extra fuel bills. And of course, daily, the price of food goes up on account of the difficulties in the Ukraine. So her instincts to cut tax which will appeal to very wealthy people, may not fly so well. She has to hit the ground with a package to help people heat their homes and face these swinging energy price rises, which we expect, but really only in a matter of weeks. Mm. And do you think that whether she makes it to, um, whether she makes it to 2024, is dependent on how she delivers on this on these pr promises, especially when you look at the turnover of prime ministers in the UK in, in the past four years. Right now, the I would say eighty something percent of the United Kingdom is focused on two things: right, the cost of living, the rising cost of living, and specifically the cost of fuel, and how we're going to survive this winter. Um, the fortunes of the Tories at the next polls will be defined by the way she deals with this, whether she does a windfall tax, um, as Labour proposes uh, uh, on the energy companies, who, by the way, have been making spectacular profits um, all of this period, in fact, for the past 50 years, energy companies have been making profits. So the issue isn't the cost of the supply. Of, 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 of their raw material. The issue is the price which is paid for um, by the consumer, whether it's a business or whether it's an individual. And so, you know, uh, th there are thoughts that uh, 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 Liz Truss might set up some kind of fund whereby the government comes in and pays a percentage of all of our energy bills. And the amount of money that's going to be required just doesn't stack up with her promise to cut taxes. Um, a couple of economists have estimated that for people to be buffered against the energy price rise, the United Kingdom is going to have to come up with 100 billion pounds sterling. And that's gonna to have to be borrowed. And the terms under which this money is borrowed is perhaps the first time that the United Kingdom is going to be facing the international money markets, the way African countries face the international money markets, they're going to be asking themselves, can the United Kingdom afford to borrow this money? Will she default or will there be difficulties with payments? And of course, what that instantly does is that it raises the cost of raising money. Mm. Uh, let me just touch on her speech once again. Um, she did talk about how, I know that she was originally um, a liberal Democrat before she became a conservative. And she did yeah. say in her speech that she ran as a conservative and would govern as a conservative, almost indicating um, that there were concerns about how she would govern. Um, has that been raised at any point during the campaign? Well, also, with what we've got to understand is that this campaign 
was amongst Tory party members. The only people who voted, the 160,000 votes that were cast, were cast only by members of the Conservative Party to choose their leader. And because their leader was currently the PM, they were effectively, 160,000 people chose the next PM of the United Kingdom. So she has to make sure, first and foremost, that she is uniting her party. Mm. Now, that's the sort of rhetoric that pulls the Tory party together. Right. You know, um, uh, kind of uh, growth, um, cutting taxes, and so on and so forth. But now she's going to enter the real world. She's going to discover that actually uh, the Tories are only a fraction of the United Kingdom. Absolutely. And so we shall see how that unfolds. And she will meet the um, Prime Minister, the um, Queen, Queen Elizabeth, on Tuesday. We'll see how that goes, bearing in mind that she yes. had once voted to um, or spoke about abolishing the, the monarchy. We'll, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for talking to us, broadcast journalist Kofi Titi. My pleasure.